Good morning. I welcome you here. I'm Jamie Alexander. I have the privilege of being one of the pastors here at First United Methodist Church of Bella Vista. Sadly, on Friday, you and I, our hearts were sickened by the, by the reports that we received in the news of a school shooting in Connecticut. And I know that in the last couple of days, as you've witnessed and you've watched and as you've heard the story unfold, that your hearts have have been broken as our nation is. As we begin this morning, we want to begin in prayer, praying with other believers around the United States that are praying for the community of Sandy Hook and Newtown, Connecticut, asking God to rain down upon their hearts, their troubled hearts and peace. So I want to invite you to share in a moment of silent prayer and then we will close and in time of corporate prayer as we invite the Lord's presence to be with us in worship. We join me in prayer. Sovereign and holy God, sadly, we join with other Christian believers, and all people of the United States in lifting up a hurting community in Connecticut. We lift up the devastation and the tragedy that has taken place there. And it's unconceivable in our mind. But the truth is it has happened. So today, Lord, we lift up families that are hurting. We lift up a school system that
that is devastated. And we lift up administrators and faculty members and staff and rescue personnel and a whole community of people. And we ask you, in your abiding love, to rain down upon them and meet their need with your sufficiency. For you are our great God of heaven, but you are a great God who's come upon earth. And in this season in which we celebrate and remember your coming and the birth in the form of a child in Emmanuel, which means God is with us, we know that, Lord, even in this moment of anguish and in a period of walking through the valley of the shadow of death, that you're our God who is here. So we lift up hurting hearts and persons, knowing that your love is raining down upon them. And Father, this morning as we begin this service of worship, we invite your presence here to touch and guide and direct our hearts. Father, we thank you for your love that never ends and for your grace that is boundless. It's in your holy name we pray, and together we say, Amen. Amen. Good morning. Great to see everyone this morning. If you happen to be a guest with us, we just want to say how much we appreciate you worshiping with us. If you're a guest here for the first time, we want to make sure that you get to know as much about the church as you can and the way that you can help us make that happen for you. If you haven't done it already, before you leave this morning, just step into the narthex at the desk out there and give us your name and address. Later this week, someone will stop by your home they will drop off a mug. They won't be there to visit during this Christmas season. Uh, but they do want to say thank you for worshiping with us. So that mug is going to be filled with information that tells about the many ministries, the many opportunities that are available in this church. And we do have so many ways that we serve God and we serve this community and we serve one another. And so we hope that you will want to be a part of that just on and on and on. So let us, let us share that with you, if you will. The attendance pads should have been passed down the rows. And if anybody got in just a little bit late, pass it one more time so that they can sign it too. Uh, we like to know who's here. And when you sign it, we know that you're here. But it also helps us to be able to figure out who's not been able to be here. And we appreciate being able to do that so we can stay in touch with everyone. If you will open your bulletins to the ministry opportunities and events, uh, you'll notice that, that we've kind of been going over into two pages, and especially during this holiday season, it seems that there are so many things that are going on. Uh, I first want to just kind of talk about what's going to happen next week. Uh, next week, of course, is Christmas, and Christmas Eve is when we're going to have three services that will be taking place. Uh, the first one will be at noon, and, and uh, that noon service is called Midday at the Manger, and that will be followed by a soup and sandwich luncheon. And so we're, we're hoping that if, if you plan to come to that, if you plan to come to the luncheon or stay for the luncheon, just give the church a call or stop by and let us know that you're planning to be there so that we can know how much food to prepare and how many tables to set up. That would be helpful for us. At 5 o'clock on that same day, Christmas Eve, there's going to be a carols and communion contemporary worship service. Uh, in the past, we've had that in the Becker Hall. This year, it's going to be in the sanctuary. And then at 7 o'clock, there will be a candles and communion traditional service. All of these services have just a little bit different uh, things to offer. If you attended every one, I know that you would get a blessing each time you attended. But if you have a favorite one that you want to come to, just mark those on your calendar and come to the, to the service that, that you're able to get to. On December 25th, which is Tuesday at noon, from noon until 1.30, there is going to be a potluck at the church. The church will be providing turkey. You provide a dish to share, and uh, that's going to be a fun time, too. So we've got some great people that are heading that up. We look forward for all of you, uh, and whether you're a member of the church or not, bring a friend, bring someone else, because it's always great to share the Christmas meal with other people. So we hope that those of you that want to will be here for that. Um, 
It is our responsibility, or we have taken it upon ourselves to be responsible for Meals on Wheels. And so we are doing, our church has signed up or been assigned the month of January to do Meals on Wheels. And although uh, Daryl Botchen has been out in the Narthex and in Becker Hall and, and getting names, we still have a number of names and January is just around the corner. So if you would be interested in spending an hour and a half one day in January or three or four or five days in January, please get in touch with Daryl Botchen. Let him know that you would be glad to help with that because we are a little low on volunteers for that and it's a fun and easy thing to do. So we hope that if you're able that you will sign up to do that. Uh, one big thing I want to tell you about that we really just found out about last week is that this coming Thursday, at 12.15 in the sanctuary, the third graders from Cooper School, and there'll be about 125 of them, will be performing here in the sanctuary. I believe that their parents, as many as able, will be here, but we want as many of our people to come and to show our appreciation and let those children just bring their part of the Christmas season to us. So this Thursday, 1215 in the sanctuary, plan to come out. It, it won't take a long time, but it'll just be a real joyful blessing for all of us. Thank you. Oh, Roger Scholes, our chairperson of the Staff Parish Relations Committee would like to say a few words. This is the time of year when we recognize our staff personnel for the church with a love offering. We have a really excellent staff and they do really excellent work for our church. So there are envelopes in the narthex, there's a basket out there and you can use that or just use a regular offering. Uh, just mark your gift uh, love offering for the church. Thank you.
stand together this morning, let us join in our call to worship. It's there in your bulletins and it will also be on the screens this morning. We gather in preparation. And we gather in expectation. We gather in celebration. With preparation and in expectation, let us celebrate. God is good. And all the time. We're so happy that you're here today. And we hope you're made to feel welcome in every way possible. But we need your help to help us to make others feel welcome. Will you greet those around you? Welcome everybody in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The advent of our Lord is near as we make God's love known in our world. I'm reading from Isaiah 12, 2 through 6. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations that he has done. And proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. As we light the third candle, we are encouraged to proclaim the good news of God's gift of salvation. God's proclamation of joy is for all people. Together, we anticipate the day of his coming. And if you'll join with us in prayer. Holy One, you are the only true source of our strength and salvation as we proclaim the good news of the coming birth of Christ. May we worship you with joy, and may we invite others to experience the joy of your salvation. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Verl and Suzanne. During the Advent season, as many of you know, we have an Advent devotional that is weekly published. And it's based on the theme of the week. This week, the theme is the gift of joy. 
And you're invited to take this, if you will. These devotionals are located in the narthex, just right out by the tree. Please pick one up. As many of you know, we also make this available to you electronically, or you can find it on the Facebook page. And if you receive it that way, and you don't think you need one of these, please still take one. Maybe there's somebody that you could hand this to and and share with them, and they would be blessed during this Christmas season. This morning, I want to share in Scripture with you from the Gospel of Luke, from the first chapter, verses 26 through 37, where we find the birth of Jesus Christ as foretold to His mother Mary. And in the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I am a virgin. And the angel answered. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called. The Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward now for a time of tithes and offerings. As we look this morning on an altar covered in gifts, I pray that we realize the gifts that we have been given of love, of hope, of joy, of expectation. Even amidst the tragedies and sorrows of this world, we have been blessed. We've been blessed because we have a God who's with us, a God who lives, and a God who shares all that He has with all of us. If you've come this morning and you would like to share in our offering time and you have no other way to do it, if you have a piece of change in your pocket, a dollar or whatever it may be, we ask that you offer that, knowing that so many live on so little in remembrance of who we are as United Methodists.
merciful God, we offer these gifts to you knowing that you will receive them, that you will bless them, multiply them, use them for your kingdom and your glory. May we forever be tenders of your, commu- of your creation, stewards of your world, knowing that you are our creator and we are loved and redeemed by you. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite everyone to be seated. As you're taking your seats, if you would, make note of the insert in your bulletin, the one of several this morning that has our celebrations, our cares, and our concerns on it. At the top, you'll notice that Melba Brown has made a donation to the music ministry in honor of her birthday on December 16th, so thank her when you see her for that. I have one addition that I'd like to make. I'd rather not make it, but I need to, and that is at Rex Davenport is now in hospice care. So if you would, please pray for Rex in this time in his life and pray for his family and uh, the struggles that Rex is having. I want to continue to pray for, for Sharon Galloway, who is still at Mercy Hospital. I want to remember all those others listed here that are recovering, whether at home or in a uh, other care facility, some that are there for a long term in their rehabilitation. Please continue to pray for each of these. As you leave this morning, there will be a list of others that you can pray for, a more extensive list of many that are in the military or other concerns that have been raised up in our church. So take one of those lists. We would like for you to pray for those as you can and as we will be praying for them here at the church. We'll be praying for Village Baptist Church this week as a family of faith here in our community that we'll be praying for. We ask that you pray for them also. We would appreciate that. We would ask that you continue to pray for all the families in Connecticut and the school system and Pray for all those who have been impacted by the tragedies of this week and former weeks. We have had a number of things in our country that have uh, touched our hearts and harmed many people and caused us to struggle and wonder. So let's continue to pray. Let's pray for all those who have been impacted and pray for ourselves as we struggle to understand how this affects us and affects our world. If we would, let us now begin our prayer by preparing in song.
us pray. Most gracious, loving, merciful God, we gather this morning to worship. We gather to celebrate You, to celebrate Your presence here with us, to celebrate Your presence in our lives continually. Lord, help us to remember that. Help us to remember that You are with us, not simply here, but wherever we are. That You walk with us, lifting us up, holding us upright, particularly in times of trouble and grief, in times of struggle or despair. Lord, lift us up this morning. Change our hearts. Brighten our world. Help us remember that we are your children and that we are here in celebration of you, our living God, and what you have done for us and what you will continue to do. Lord, we are thankful for who we are, for what we have. Even amidst our struggles, we give you thanks and lift your name in praise. Lord, as you gather with us today, we lift up those things that we hold tightly to. We lift up the burdens that hold us back. We give them to you and release to help us to focus on those things that are important. Lord, amidst the tragedy of the loss of children and loved ones, the losing of people that protect us. Lord, help us remember that we are not alone. Remind us that there are so many tragedies around this world that, Lord, help us to not let them burden us too greatly. Lift it from us and help us know that you are working, working to turn evil into good, to wipe away the tears, even in this world full of pain and anguish. Lord, lift us up through this worship service and help us to understand that you are with us, that you are our God, and that you will see us through wherever we are and whatever we do. Lord, we pray this morning for those who need your healing touch. May they be healed and comforted, loved by you, and may we express our love to them. Lord, all these things we pray this morning in your precious Son's most holy name and as we have been taught to pray by you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
we're so appreciative of our choir. We show you appreciate. And for our handbell choir, they work so hard, and you see the history of of the the music, and there it's written for you on, the, on your bulletin. We're so glad that you've been here with us today, and as we prepare to sing our closing song, which is is angels or hark the herald angels sing. It's page number two forty. I offer to you this invitation, and that is, if you'd like to become a part of this church family, we'd love to welcome you here. You're invited to come on your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord of your life, on transfer your membership from another church family. Pastor Lee and myself, we're here also available to you if you want to experience a time of prayer, or the altar is here for you to be in a time of personal prayer. But in the joy of this morning and what our choir and handbell has for choir has proclaimed for us, let us stand and sing. Hark the herald, angels sing. Again, choir, thank you so much for this morning. And thank you for being here with us. We pray that you'll join with us in the coming week. Remember that this coming Thursday at 1215, the third graders from Cooper Elementary will be here to sing. There's about 125 of them. They will be singing eight songs. And then they'll have lunch in Becker Hall following that. Friday night, we have a service of hope and healing at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. And we invite you to be a part of that. And then we will have Christmas. We'll have Sunday services and Christmas Eve services. Go now in the knowledge that our God is a God who's faithful. He's faithful in our past. He's faithful in his present. He's faithful for our future. And in this season in which we celebrate his son's birth, we celebrate his faithfulness coming to us in the form of his son, Emmanuel, who is God with us. Remember, don't just come to church, but be the church. God bless you.